All right, in this video, I want to touch on the subject of how to speak in tongues. It sounds like some sort of evil sin at first. At least that's what I thought. That, you know, when you speak in tongues, it's kind of like... It reminded me of, like, the serpent concept in the Bible, where it's kind of like this snake, this betrayal, you know, this enmity against God. And that's not really what it is at all. And I've been feeling this more and more. Like, the Holy Spirit, honestly, if we're going to get wishy-washy in this video. So if you're not looking for practical stuff, then you found it. <laughs> I felt the Holy Spirit speaking through me more and more in these videos. The more and more I've distanced myself from technology and given more of my time to studying God's word, praying more, just developing that relationship with him more and more and more. Because that had been off for a while. If you're interested in that topic of how my relationship with God basically just fell off and how... He was able to save me in 24 hours, then check out my other video that's popping off, how to 10x your relationship with God in 24 hours, if you're interested in that. Um, but since then, since that point, I felt like I'm so much closer to God because I've removed the distractions and those distractions, you know, as a result of this has given me more time to focus on studying God's word and more time to focus on teaching you the wisdom and understanding. It's given me more capability to do so, not because of my own works. However, I'm not closer to God because I'm reading the Bible more. I'm not closer to God because I'm doing anything. I'm closer to God simply because he's graced me with the presence of the Holy Spirit again. Because when you pray, when you study God's word, when you try and get to know him better, it's not that you necessarily become more godly. It's not necessarily that you reach out to God when you pray even. What prayer does, rather, it's a magnification of the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life. Like when you zoom in on a, when you zoom with the camera on your phone, you can see things like that are further away, right? I don't know when you, it's like it becomes bigger, you know? That's the same thing that's how it works. Like when we pray, we're just like we're zooming in on that camera, on the Holy Spirit that's inside of us, that dwells inside of us. The same one that rose Jesus from the dead. And that's a pretty, it's a pretty exciting thing to think about that the power of prayer does that. It magnifies God's love for us in our lives. It magnifies the presence of the Holy Spirit. And when this happens, when we magnify, no, well, we have some part in this. It's our responsibility to be, you know, take action towards these things. But when God gives us the gift of the Holy Spirit through repentance, through faith, through giving our lives to him, to dedicating ourselves to him, like every bit of ourselves, as much as we possibly can, and progressively overloading that through time. What happens is that there's this thing that's called we speak in tons. And speaking in tons, now I'm going to give this definition. It's allowing the Holy Spirit to take over your mind. And as a symptom of that, it takes over your speech. That's what I mean when I say that the Holy Spirit speaks through me when I'm making these videos more, more so than it was before. Because before it's really about this game of quantity versus quality and the work itself, the per the work itself towards the purpose that God has given me was distracting me from the relationship I have with him. Because you have to understand that no matter how great or how, no matter how righteous your calling may be that God's given you, you can't let the work, the process of working towards fulfilling that get in the way of your actual relationship with him. The best case scenario is to be able to be able to balance the both, balance both of them, to be able to have this calling that magnifies your relationship with God, that magnifies his love for us as sinners through other people, and that he uses you as your vessel to do that. And also just to be able to balance that with keeping your relationship with him intact also. And speaking in tons, it's just allowing the Holy Spirit to take over. You know, when... um. Let's say that you're driving a plane and you have no idea how to, on earth to drive a plane. And there's like a thousand people on this plane. It's like you have no idea how to drive it. You're like putting under so much pressure. Like you're just trying to figure it out. You have no idea what you're doing. And, there's, and then someone comes along and this person just happens to be an expert pilot. They know exactly what they're doing. And they come along and say, hey, you're trying to drive this plane. Appreciate your effort first off, but... I know what I'm doing. I advise that you let me take over. That is what it's like allowing the Holy Spirit to take over our minds and therefore our speech. When the Holy Spirit speaks through us, it's not us talking. It is God using us as his vessel to be able to impact other people 
to bring people closer to him. Because when, when a sinner gives advice to another sinner about how to stop sinning, it's pretty counterintuitive 99% of the time. Because we're, it's, it, it, it just, when you seek advice from someone that, when you try and get in shape and you try and learn from someone that is morbidly obese, then you, it's, it doesn't work, right? Because they don't know what they're doing. Because if they did know what they're doing, they wouldn't be obese, right? Same principle here. When we try and seek guidance from another sinner on how we can live more righteous lives, then we don't really get anywhere unless they're a little bit more righteous than we are. But then again, there's no real way to gauge that because you're not them and you're not in their shoes. You don't know everything about them, but the person that does know everything, not only about them, but also about you is God. So why don't we look to God instead to be that guide and like to be that North star in our lives, to pursue a more righteous lifestyle and to let him take over when we speak to other people, when we preach, when we sermon. Let's say you want to be a pastor someday. You probably want the Holy Spirit to speak through you more than you want to speak to everybody else. Because it's your responsibility to give wisdom, to give understanding that is going to magnify their relationship with God in their lives. That's the responsibility of the pastor. That's the purpose of the pastor. In the midst of all these people going to church, congregating in one place to learn about God, the one person who bears the most responsibility is not the people in the crowd, but it is the one leading them. I remember... A quote from some philosopher, it reigns very, very true, is that out of everybody in the kingdom, the kingdom of slaves, so there's like the slaves, right? There's the slaves, or there's the common people, and then there's the high reps, and there's the king. Out of everybody in the entire kingdom, the greatest slave is the king himself, because he's the one that has to take care of everybody else. The slaves, they really just have to take care of themselves and their families. Now imagine that this family that the king has to take care of is like a thousand people. That's the responsibility. It's a little bit of a daunting thing to think about as a pastor or maybe someone that is, has influence to any of you. Maybe it's social media. Maybe it's, you know, pastor. Maybe it's preaching. Maybe it's ministering. Maybe it's being a teacher in school or something like that. Just the responsibility of influencing people. It's something that is very daunting to think about. It's something like it can be very overwhelming, right? I remember when I started this channel, it's like the responsibility that came with like, okay, you are going to make a YouTube channel and you're going to preach the word of God. And your job here is to bring people closer to him more than anything else, even improving their lives. That's a responsibility that you have to take on now. And with that responsibility comes a lot of work that you need to do that comes from getting closer to God. That's a lot of effort. That's a big thing to take on. I'm not trying to puff myself up here. I'm not trying to like give myself too much credit. Because I don't deserve to even be able to record these videos. I should be burning in hell right now. But I'm not because of the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. But this responsibility of influencing other people, it can be very daunting, right? It's why we let the other pilot take over. It's why we don't allow ourselves to carry the weight on our own cross. We let the Holy Spirit take over for us so that not only do we have less weight to bear, we're more calm and more relaxed when we make these videos. I don't know if you've noticed, but I mean, I mean, bro, I've been like, I've been like smiling, like just as soon as I wake up, just like, you know, things have been way better recently. And that's largely just because I've learned to outsource these videos to God. The responsibility of this entire business, it's not on me, it's on God. My only responsibility is as a man, is giving my burdens and casting my burdens onto God. Imagine a life like that, where you are so free from any burdens of worldly things that your only responsibility is to give everything to God. And through that, all of these blessings, like the, the popular channel, the income, the family, the fitness, the all the goals that you could possibly ever want that you sought before you came to Jesus, those things are all added to you, even further beyond what you actually set out. No matter how ambitious you were, all these things are added to you. More than you thought that you were capable of yourself because you gave it all to Jesus, you outsourced it to Jesus. And that's what it means to speak in tongues, to let the Holy Spirit take over. And this range true, especially if you're like me and you're trying to build 
this ministry online. Maybe it's an audience or just something else. If you're trying to influence people, maybe it's some kid at school. Maybe you're just trying to teach someone how to work out in the gym. Just letting the Holy Spirit take over the love, the compassion, the care, everything wonderful that comes from it. And that doesn't come from ourselves. That's what the Holy Spirit and letting that take over, letting his grace and his presence take over. That's what it does. And through that, that's how we change people's, people's lives. We don't change people's lives through this hard teaching of like, oh, you got to do this, you got to do that, you got to do this, you got to do that. You don't teach someone to live a righteous life by giving them law. You teach someone to live a righteous life by setting an example for them and then giving them grace and love that they really needed. That's what it means to speak in tongues. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen.